A newly synthesized molecule that could help fight Parkinson's, and it came from the ocean. So I figured I'd try something a little bit different and fun this week. Um, last week was a brutal week for my glassware. I broke a uh, 500 mil set funnel, I broke a 1000 mil single neck, and I broke a 1000 mil three neck. So other projects are in the works, but that glassware is on order. Uh, some of it got here today, some of it's getting here tomorrow. So the projects will progress after that. Sea sponges, just swaying gently in the ocean, not really doing much. But is that really the truth? What are they really up to down there? But chemists at UCLA recently synthesized a form of molecule that's found in sea sponges. The molecule is called lysodenoric acid A, and I would have shown you with my 3D modeling kit, but I do not have 29 carbons, so there it is. Lysodenoric acid A is suspected to have beneficial effects for those fighting Parkinson's disease. It can actually counteract molecules that can harm DNA, RNA, proteins, and it possibly can even kill entire cells. Molecules can exist in two distinct forms called enantiomers. It's kind of like a left and a right hand. They're identical, but they're mirrored. Even though they're identical, they can have wildly different effects. One side can be really beneficial, and the other side can be deadly. The previous issue with the synthesis of lysodenoric acid A is that it always yielded a mix of those two enantiomers. But with this new research, they've found a way to isolate just one of those. The researchers used a cyclic alien compound which aided them in the reaction and allowed them to create a usable form of the molecule. Essentially, they employed it as an intermediate in their 12-step process. Cyclic aliens were discovered in the 1960s and they were never before used to try and synthesize such large and complex molecules such as this. While they were considered largely forgotten, this has kind of rekindled their fire a little bit. One of the researchers stated by challenging conventional thinking, they were able to synthesize cyclic aliens and use them to create such complex molecules such as lysodenoric acid. The discovery is exciting because while it may have benefits uh, in terms of those suffering with Parkinson's disease, it may very well have benefits for others suffering with similar neurological conditions. This is only the first step in the process, but creating a usable form of the right molecule is certainly a big step. The process to go full pharmaceutical with this is pretty long and consists of many trials and certifications, so we may not be seeing anything, you know, wild for a while. I really like the article and I wanted to share because it shows that science is not a definitive process and thinking outside of the conventional norm should be encouraged. One person may completely dismiss an idea and the other may persist with it and completely get it to work. Sometimes these long-forgotten tactics can be brought back and proved to be instrumental in certain discoveries. Scientists at the Georgia Institute of Technology have found a way to disinfect water quickly and effectively. The process uses small electric pulses to disinfect the water and it's called Conventional Electric Field Treatment or CEFT. CEFT has been used in the pasteurization process for quite a while, but it's never been investigated in water purification. Researchers used what they're calling locally enhanced electric field tactics, or LAFT, which brought electricity directly to the bacteria in the water. The electrodes use carbon nanotips, which allow the charge to be delivered to the bacteria directly. By using these nanotips, it also allows concentrated charges to be built up almost instantaneously. What this does is it sends an electrical pulse to the membranes of the bacteria and wipes them out. What this does is it essentially disrupts all of the charged ions around the membranes and it causes them to break apart. Now these aren't just pulses, they're pulses that are actually measured in nanoseconds, about 200 nanoseconds. This normally wouldn't be long enough to kill the bacteria, however with the gold nanotips what they found is since they're delivering that charge directly to the bacteria, it is effective. What they found was optimal was applying a charge of around 40 kilovolts per centimeter to the water for about 200 nanoseconds. This was able to instantly sanitize the water and they found an efficacy of about 95%. It looks like what they'll be trying going forward is to increase the density of the gold nanotips on the electrodes. They'll also be trying different metals 
and they'll try different time intervals as well as power levels. They'll also try different types of bacteria as they only tried one, which was S. epidermidis. I think this is a pretty exciting idea, and I think it has the potential to be progressed into something that's really useful. 40 kV seems like a lot to the average person when you talk about power lines, but you got to realize that you can buy an 18 million volt taser on Amazon like nobody's business. It would be cool to see this tech scaled down into modular units that could easily be transported into areas of the world that struggle with water sanitation. <coughs> Flint, Michigan. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe for more content. If you'd like to support the channel, check out the new link for Patreon in the description below, and we'll see you guys later.